Welcome to another edition of the Michelle Clark Heard Show on YouTube and Facebook Live. Happy New Year, everyone, as we bring in 2021. Joined out by Cincinnati women's basketball head coach, Michelle Clark Heard. Coach, happy New Year to you and uh, a nice uh, way to celebrate the New Year for your team is uh, you're coming off a really nice win at Wichita State. Yes, definitely. Happy New Year's to you, too. And uh, yes, that definitely was a, a big road win. Anytime you can get a, a win on the road is always great. Um, but that was definitely one that uh, we've been really trying to work toward uh, adding and putting everything together that we've been doing and uh, finally came out with the victory. So really proud of this group and how they stepped up. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, that game uh, more coming up uh, here in just a little bit. We'll also talk about uh, your two big home games uh, coming up this week as well. But uh, first, um, we'll go back. Uh, seems like a long time ago now before the holidays. Uh, that USF game, I know um, you didn't get the result that you wanted uh, coming away with a loss to the number 20 team in the nation, but and that felt maybe like a turning point for your team as we, we saw a lot of improvements and things that particularly you wanted to see improvements on. Um, you were able to cut down the turnovers that, that you had been mentioning, uh, things like that as well. But that was a game that, again, I know that you didn't get the result you wanted, but it felt like this team kind of made some big strides forward. Definitely. I think uh, when you look at it, um, you know, with – Four minutes to go in the game, we were only down by three, uh, you know, uh, and I think just still uh, made some small mistakes, some uh, miscues on defense where we didn't get stops, uh, but just really proud of how we grew. I really believe we grew in that game. And uh, just as I said, I think in all of our games, we've just uh, put different things together at different times. So uh, I do believe that was definitely a game where we were able to build up and build some confidence and uh, just continue to keep working so we can get to uh, this past uh, Saturday's uh, game at Wichita. And I know you and I talked about it following that game against USF. One of the things, you know, you might not even see looking at, you know, we talk about the turnover margin, things like that, but just your team's ability to, to battle back in that game. I think you trailed by, it was 13 points at the end of the first quarter to come all the way back and take the lead against the number 20 team in the nation. That's something that a young team still learning to play together, that, that's a valuable learning experience. And it's been one that we've definitely used a lot uh, as we talk to them, as we watch film, as we show them, uh, and show them the little things that um, we can continue to clean up. And if we do, um, getting stops at particular times and taking good shots, uh, not taking quick bad shots, uh, making sure that when we get to the free throw line, we make free throws. So a lot of things to make sure that we could talk about, uh, but also make sure that they understood and knew that we, we feel like we're, we're getting closer and closer. So just really talk talk to them about that. And and a lot of new faces, and not a lot of new players in different situations they hadn't been in before. And we talked about this earlier. I really believe, too, we have to really find a way to focus to keep our starters on the floor. Um, we had three of our starters foul out that game. Uh, and I think that that really also hurt us also, too. Well, now we'll move along to uh, this game against Wichita State. But actually, before we get to that, we have to, uh, I think we have to mention um, your game at SMU, uh, again, canceled. Uh, it's something that uh, everybody has had to deal with uh, across the conference this year. SMU now, uh, you know, moving to, to cancel the rest of their season. But uh, it, it's just kind of that, that stop-start nature, another, another obstacle that everybody has to, to find a way to adjust to. Yeah, and it was. It's, it's been tough for us because we, well, I feel like, uh, and I think the team probably feels that way too, that we've been hit a couple of times. But like you said, I think the biggest thing for us is making sure that we just talk to our players all the time about taking uh, day by day. And that's what we have to do and being focused and ready for whatever that looks like. Again, as you said, this is happening all across the country with in every conference for all different type, all different type teams. So on the men's side and the women's side. So I think that's something that we just try to make sure that we can stay in the moment, uh, be prepared. And uh, But I know my assistant coaches uh, and us getting prepared for the games, I know they're running around trying to make sure about scouts and everything else. So taking my hat off to my staff and everyone that's adjusting and doing everything that they're doing because uh, they make my job easier. So uh, our job is to get the kids prepared and ready and let them know that whatever uh, team that we're ready uh, ready to go and ready to play. It certainly uh, is work that uh, does not go unnoticed, uh, the preparation that goes into each individual game and uh, to have it, you know, either thrown out the window or adjusted to a different team at the last minute. Uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of people out there might not realize just what a big uh, shock to the system that is. And as you said, your staff and a lot of other uh, teams and staffs around the country happen to deal with that this year. 
Uh, Wichita State is a team that had to deal with that uh, back in December as well. And, you know, you were facing the Shockers uh, coming off for you, uh, kind of a long layoff uh, from the holidays. But your team, big, big win on the road. And we've talked about this uh, in the past in past years. You know, I think back last year to that that win you had at VCU, that the buzzer beater from Angel Riser. But that game felt like such a big momentum boost that your team was able to ride through the rest of the season. And, you know, who knows, this might be a similar case for your team this year. Well, I think it was just really good for us in so many different ways. Um, you know, the ability for us to, you know, first, we always talk about getting off to a good start. We got off to a great start. Uh, and them coming out of the locker room, as you said, being ready to play. And in a situation, like you said, where we hadn't played and we got the SMU game canceled, they came back from Christmas. Uh, you know, so again, credit to the staff uh, in uh, helping uh, just get everyone prepared and ready and just focused and locked in. And uh, so, yeah, we really, I believe, and the staff also, too, we talked about that a lot after the game, uh, just really tried to get them focusing on playing and being in the moment and being excited to have the opportunity to play. Uh, and then uh, we just did a lot of really good things. Uh, you know, anytime you can have four players in double figures, uh, of course, Imari Thomas is going to do what she does. Uh, but, boy, I give a ton of credit to uh, Milan Schimmel and, and Destiny and Aram. They stepped up big for us. And uh, so really excited for them. And we just want to continue to keep building off of it. Yeah, that's, to me, one of the things that really jumps out about this performance. Uh, Imari has become just uh, so dependable. You, you almost expect her to get 25, 30 points a game with what she's been doing here in her senior season. Uh, we'll talk about her award winning the uh, AAC Co-Player of the Week award uh, as she continues to get accolades. But to me, the thing that really jumped out in this game, four players in double figures, and you, you talked about it right there, but when you're able to get that on top of what Imari has been bringing you, that usually is going to spell success for your team. Well, and I think the greatest thing, and I'm really excited, uh, you know, that's the reason why, you know, we brought Destiny and Milan in. Uh, you know, just their experience and them playing at the junior college level. Uh, and I just think everybody's continuing to keep working the jail and get better and be uh, comfortable. I think the break was good for everyone. Uh, and so, yeah, so just really excited about that and to see uh, their confidence and, you know, how uh, D was running the team and, you know, how Milan stepped up and, you know, was rebounding and, and, and assist. And it just was fun to watch. And, you know, Rom, you know, getting some big uh, stops on defense and making the big shot when it was uh, close, uh, you know, on that uh, last baseline out of bounds play where I think it put us up six or eight. So uh, just a lot of big moments in that game. And so uh, just really proud and proud of our growth and just how we're growing as a team. Uh, winning the rebounding battle as well. I know that's something that you always uh, pay very close attention to. Uh, plus seven in the uh, rebounding uh, column, and that's uh, always going to be big for you. Yes, and that's really important, and we have to do that. Uh, I feel like we uh, this year we definitely have size uh, in, in every basically position, uh, and I think that that's something that has helped us, allowed us to – you know, switch up our defenses and switch on defense and do a lot of different things. And so, you know, definitely talk to them about going and rebounding and doing the things that we need to. So, you know, we can get get up, especially on the defensive end, when we get get a rebound, getting the ball up the floor so we can try to get some transition points. And I think that was something, you know, we've really been trying to focus on. I think that's one of the things that we've been lacking. Uh, and, you know, we got 11 transition points in this game, and I think it helps. And, you know, our goal is 12. 12 uh, transition points a game. And so we want to make sure that we can keep sticking with that because I think that's really important and that's how we play. Yeah, we know when the Bearcats are uh, getting up and down the floor, that uh, usually spells success. It has the last two years, and uh, good to see that uh, start to get going here as we've shifted gears into a new year. We talked about all the things that uh, are starting to come along that uh, you guys are improving on and, and made a big difference in this game. But again, old reliable is Imari Thomas. And uh, again, rewarded for her efforts as it was uh, just announced here this week, uh, co-AAC player of the week once again. She just continues to have a phenomenal senior season. Well, and it's a lot of credit to her. I tell you, it's uh, it makes my job easier as a coach uh, when you know you have one of the best players in the league on uh, that you're coaching every day, day in and day out. Uh, her growth has is, is just been incredible. Uh, her IQ is, she just understands the game, watches the game, studies the game, uh, and it's really good. Uh, I think and the greatest thing is her maturity uh, from how much she's matured and grown from last year to this year. Being able to put her in different positions and making sure that she uh, she is really a leader and that other coach out on that floor. And uh, so her and I are uh, really, really connecting 
and talking about a lot of different things so we can make sure that we're doing everything we can for we can take this program uh, and keep getting better and better. Imari certainly showing uh, why she's not only one of the top players in the conference, but for my money, uh, one of the best in the nation. And uh, I think day after day, game after game, she's she's getting more and more attention uh, that that frankly she deserves. And like you said, the the impact she makes not only just on the court, but as a leader of this team uh, is immeasurable. And uh, we're certainly so glad to have Imari uh, as a Bearcat. Well, now taking a look forward, uh, you have two big games coming up this week, uh, taking on uh, Tulsa here on Wednesday afternoon at Fifth Third Arena, and then Tulane on Saturday. Uh, always important to defend the home court. And you have two teams here that are kind of in the, in the middle of the pack in the conference mm -hmm. standings with you, and these are the games that really kind of go a long way in, in, in shaking things out and who finishes where. Well, I think uh, you said the most important thing. you got to make sure you take care of your home court. Uh, you know, you always say as a coach and you talk to your team about – uh, winning your home games and going on the road and stealing a few. But we just went on the road and stole one. So now we're going to have to make sure we're taking care of home. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, Tulsa is doing a great job and, you know, they have a lot of really good guard play. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're in a situation where we're going to have to make sure we're guarding and guarding the three uh, and just really make sure we're locked in and doing the things we just talked about, our rebounding, our defensive transition, uh, making sure that we are playing our game and what that looks like. And so I think it's really important. And then, of course, when you talk about Tulane, Lisa's done phenomenal and, and has been been coaching for a long time and always has, uh, you know, such a great team. And they, they have four of their starters back, I think, and or maybe all of them. Uh, and just uh, in a situation where they just do a lot of great things, they can shoot it. They have inside-out game. Uh, you know, they change up their defenses. Uh, so – you know, you're right. This is a big week for us, a big week, and we're excited about it. You know, uh, anytime you can have the opportunity to play and, and, and compete, and especially on your home court, is, is what you're looking forward to. You look at this three-game stretch, you know, from Saturday to Saturday in eight, in eight days. Uh, if you could come away here with two wins this week, suddenly, uh, you know, you want to talk about, we talked about jump-starting your season with that road win, but you can get three wins in the span of eight days. That, that feels like something that completely – shifts gears into the where you were and, and where you're headed. Oh, definitely. And I think that was something that, you know, we talked about today in film, uh, really just showing them a lot of the good things that we did in the Wichita State game, but the things we need to clean up. Um, but we definitely talked about taking one game at a time. Uh, but definitely, as you just said, making sure we can protect our home court. The schedule for us uh, is a great time for us right now to be here at home and uh, just making sure that we understand that and taking advantage of it. Uh, you know, we talked about the, the mishaps that we had with ECU and with South Florida. And now it's time for us to give our, our fans, the ones that, you know, are able to be here and then the ones that are watching uh, to see how we protect our home court and why we're so successful here. Well, I think if there's uh, one or, or two things that both of the previous two seasons really had in common, I think both at one point, you know, you found yourself maybe scuffling a little bit on a little bit of a skid and then having that big win to turn things around and two, defending the home court. It seems like those really were the two, the two keys to both of your seasons that we've seen potentially that big road win now. And like you said, if, if the, the home wins, defending the home court follows, you're kind of right on the same path you were the last two seasons. Well, and I think that's what it's all about. And when you think about it, uh, you know, and you look back and you look back to us graduating for, for big time impact starters from last year, we're right where we need to be. We're right where we need to be. Uh, our growth, uh, it was uh, very exciting to see uh, in the Wichita State game. And now we just had to continue to keep growing each and every day. So I agree with you totally, uh, just especially to the part of understanding and knowing uh, what we had uh, to go through, not only uh, like everyone else in the country in the middle of the pandemic, but uh, just replacing so much. And so to see where uh, how hard our players have worked and how they've worked to grow and grow together, and even the staff, again, not even just the coaching staff, the support staff, everyone, uh, you know, the the trainers and the, just everyone putting us in a position where we could have a chance to play. It's just it means a lot so much to myself and to this team. Well, we really uh, count your blessings uh, here in 2020 and 2021. And we're certainly all glad to, just to have the opportunity to, to have college basketball and uh, to have the opportunity uh, to see the Bearcats uh, start to take that step forward as we're into January and February. That's uh, that's even better. And Coach, I know you've always talked about in the past, obviously you want to win every game you can, but those February games, those March games count for a lot. We're marching toward that. And if this team continues to show that improvement, that's that's exactly what you want to see. 
Well, and especially when you have, uh, you know, a young team per se, uh, meaning a lot of new faces, uh, they're still getting to understand and know what that looks like. That's why it was so big for us to go on the road and win our first uh, conference game on the road. Uh, because like you said, it's, it's so hard to even win on the road anyway. Uh, so it, it is this adjustment period. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, myself and the staff are just excited every single day to just go to war and go to battle with this, with this group. And, uh, we just love watching them grow and, and seeing, uh, like you said, this January, the, these next couple of weeks are going to be really important for our team and for our program. Uh, and we're going to continue to keep fighting to work to get better and better. Well, you can definitely feel the excitement building up around the program, and it's going to be an exciting week at uh, Fifth Third Arena. Two big home games for the Bearcats as Cincinnati takes on both Tulsa and Tulane. Coach, uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, always enjoy catching up with you here, and uh, we will see you at Fifth Third Arena. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That's head coach Michelle Clark Hurt as Cincinnati takes on Tulsa at 2 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon and then Tulane at 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Both games will be uh, televised on ESPN+. Plus. Hope to have all of you tuning in for those. But for Coach Hurt, this is Matt Noonan saying so long. We'll see you next time.